talk about this amp so we have our Fuchs FBT 700 which is a line from the Andy Fuchs if you're familiar with Fuchs audio technology uh, Fuchs is mostly known for uh, guitar amps in the past but he is has been testing his uh, dipping his toe into the waters of bass amps and he's had other bass amps out there there's some other tube amps out there but this one the FBT is supposed to be the kind of the modern version of the SVT in a lot of ways because he's using a tube preamp in this one with a switching preamp mm -hmm. is what we're looking at. Because the amp itself weighs between five or six pounds is what we're looking at. Not bad. Not bad at all. So the face play is actually very simple. What we're going to do is I have a P-Bass from 69 and Sean, your P-Bass is? I think it's a 2020. Nice. So we have a modern and a classic kind of together. Mm -hmm. I'm running flat ones and you have round ones. Round ones, yep. Very cool. So we have the ability to kind of test some different features and see what's going on and how we can kind of see where this amp kind of lands, right? Yeah. So this amp is kind of unique. Um, the thing about that I like about it is that it, simplicity is key, right? Simplicity is key. And, and again, like like I said, he's, model, he's modeling this after like the SVT series. Mm -hmm. Now there is the FBS series, which is modeled after that class, like the classic 80s, 90s amps, which were the, uh, uh, <laughs> we were just talking yeah. about this. Wait, where, where is it? The Walter Woods. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's one. So they, you have that more of that Walter Woods with that solid state sound, which mm -hmm. is uh, which is classic on its own. So you have two very different styles of classic amps that were kind of that he's kind of going for with his with his line. Um, so Sean, you know, uh, let's give it a shot. So what I'd like to do is um, we're going to talk about this gain stage now. The gain stage in this is really unique because there is no decibel cut. I don't know if you noticed that on the amp. No, no, I didn't notice that. Yeah, there's no decibel cut. So the idea behind this is that um, any any bass, whether it's passive or, or active, you can kind of adjust and get that gain stage. Now, the, the pre-gain in here is supposed to be that, it gives us that ability to kind of like grind it out a little bit if we want to push those tubes. Yeah, so it's not that I usually like to go yeah, for. Yeah, so you're pushing it, you're probably using like a preamp to do that, like mm -hmm. a, I don't know, are you using like a, uh, Sans amp, amp. Yep. yes. Yeah. So you're using a dig you're using a solid state amp to actually do. This. So we have a couple tubes inside here. So what we want to do is to get that, we bring down the post gain. And Sean, would you mind? Uh, I'm going to have you play a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the gain, mm -hmm. and I'm going to bring I'm going to push the the pre gain down a little bit. And I have this kind of set at uh, standard setting. I haven't we haven't talked about the EQ yet. And remember, everything about this amp is actually going to be in the. Uh, the article that's written with this. So if you're interested about the overall settings and, and really the, the ins and outs of the amplifier, there is a written part that goes along with this demo. Okay. But please play a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna kinda go through the pregame while you're playing. Sure. down so obviously in a, in a louder setting right now we're not trying to clip the the mics right or the gain sec or, or the uh, or the di and that's what we were, we were trying to prevent so um, I did bring the post gain down here but I was bringing up the pre gain to get to the point where we start to get some of that grind that we're looking mm -hmm. for with the tubes so we're pushing the tubes to that level now if we bring the gain back down and I bring this back up so we come back into this this kind of setting right here where we end up with more of that like kind of warm tone of course, we're, we're pushing it a little bit, so if we're getting like... Kind of like 
under underdriven, right? It, but you're still not losing the tone or, you, or the note, rather. Yeah, you're not. The fundamental. I feel like the fundamentals are the whole time, right? Right. Yeah. The fundamentals very strong, especially the tr especially the transient. Yeah. And, we're, and we're seeing that no matter which, you know, whether you're doing the flats or the round, the transients. Yeah. And that's kind of the, the strongest point that we're looking for is that transient. The transient is very solid on this. Yeah, it sounds great. So the next part of this section is our highs and our lows, right next to each other, of course. And, and right now I have the high kind of set a little lower than the low. If we bring the low up, and Sean, would you mind demoing again? So I'm going to push that low a little bit more. Rounds. I, where do you have your where do you have your tone set by the way? Actually, mine's all the way open. Mine's all the way closed. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm all the, I'm all the way full back. So if I were if I open that. really drives right now we're only using a 112 cabinet this is one of those v boutique cabinets mm -hmm. so it has a celestian speaker in there which isn't it's okay it's perfect for this but right now we have it set uh next up which is really interesting that we have a five-way mid toggle switch mm -hmm. so we have an active mid which is interesting right because you normally don't see it listed as active mid you see mid and then yeah. you have the mid frequency setting mm -hmm. so a mid a five-way mid frequency and what andy says is that if we set the active mid to center and kind of Set it here. Go ahead and play a little bit. That's supposed to be that B15 kind of sound. It emulates that B15, right? Yeah. Very warm, you know? Yeah. A little honky, right? That's what you kind of want. Yeah. I like that. Now, the other, the other cool thing about this amp is that your send and return on your effects is on the front. So if you're setting up a pedal board, mm -hmm. you're not running it to the back of the amp. That's convenient. Especially if it's rack mount, right? Mm -hmm. So once you rack mount this, and that's another thing that's very cool about this is if you rack mount this amp, it's not, you don't have to kind of run to the back to kind of try to get everything plugged in. With a flashlight. Yeah, exactly, or your phone. You're grabbing your phone and trying to look through it. This way we just kind of run it into the very front and you have your pedal board. I love how that's there. Now the, mm -hmm. the last section of the amp itself is gonna be featured, basically, uh, it's, all, it's all our output, right? Mm -hmm. It's all the DI. It's all the DI saying. Now I don't know if you know about this, but when I put this into mute, the DI is still active. So oh. when we're playing through it. So if you want to mute the amp and you're still mm -hmm. playing and you're using headphones, you can mute the amp and play. So if that's muted, you're actually still hearing it. See how it's still showing up on the uh, the meter there? Right. So what we did was by muting it, you can run this into your into your recordings into your recording rig. You can have a muted sound and then run a run a set of headphones off of whatever your DAW is. You know. Mm -hmm. But this is really nice. So again, we have the pre and post. Uh, we have our DI phase, and then a ground lift. Okay. Now the back of the amp is what I found really unique. Now you're not gonna see it, it's gonna be in the photo that goes along with this, but take a look at the back of the amp and tell me what you notice. Let's see here, uh, quarter inch outs. Uh, yeah. The, yeah, the quarter inch no, not speak on. Yep. So there is no there is no speak on currently on this amp. So I don't know. What do you what do you think? Of, what, what do you think about this amp, Sean? I mean, it sounds warm. Uh, I, I I love the fact of the simplicity of it. That's really nice. Um, I've always been a, a guy for simplicity. Like when it comes to the amps, I don't really yeah. like a lot of switches or like even like this EQ oh, like I, faders. I, I hate graphic EQs. Yeah, like, I just I'm can't not do a fan. It. I'm not yeah. a fan. I want it simple. I am I I'm, I come from the world of the B15 mm -hmm. where it's like you have volume and treble. Yeah, the, the big one or for me is always and bass. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, the big one for me is always mid control, mid and low control. Like, like yeah. the high, I could always. I, I for me, I would always end up leaving that like flat. Like I, I'm not, I'm never one to kind of boost that. Yeah. Me personally, it's always kind of like the, I'm playing with like the the bass and like the the mid frequency. Yes. Yeah. So I I always kind of take the mids out. Like I used to be a real mid pusher, mm -hmm. and that was like that was back in my Jocko days, like wanting to be Jocko, mm -hmm. and then like. 
getting away from that, I kind of I kind of went back to taking the mids out and kind of setting that a little bit more somewhere right, right around here. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you just have that, everything shows up. It's just, it's, it's, it's more beefy, man. There is a 300 watt series as well. Uh, the 700 is is really great. Uh, so definitely like for a gigging musician, oh, yeah. like yeah. not not so much like entry level, but definitely somebody who could really like benefit from having a solid tone and reliable. Amp. I, I think I think it runs the gambit on that because you have the 300 series too. So okay. um, if you're looking for that tube amp, and there is a there is a a couple hundred dollar difference between each version. Now you have the solid state, and the solid state I think was starting. I saw it on Reverb as well around nine information there. 
But I think it's really important to, to know that what you're getting into, it's like if you're gonna go and buy, you, you, wanna, you wanna make sure that your amp matches your bass, right? Mm -hmm. you, don't wanna, you don't wanna spend you know, $10,000 on, on a bass and then spend two hundred dollars on an amp, and then wonder why your tone is terrible, right? <laughs> and and it's like you can play a lot of notes, but if those notes all sound bad, it doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. If you can play one note that just resonates and just sounds incredible, you yeah, know, and also better. just going direct, going direct into the amp is perfect. Sounds great. Oh yeah, it's there's there's definitely something about it. It's great. It is, it is a great head, especially somebody who's making that leap from, I would say from the bar, it's even good for a bar band, like it, you could throw it in your bag, sure. and I guess there is, um, from what I understand, uh, Fuchs is going to have a bag that's going to be made for this amp, because the footprint for all the amps are actually very, they're the same. Mm -hmm. The face plate is the same, the shape is the same, it's, it's the, it's, they're all the same dimensions, no matter which one you end up with. So familiarity between one is familiarity between all. But obviously, if you have a tube amp, if you're if you're driving that preamp, it's going to be a little bit different on a tube versus a solid state amp. You For know? sure. Yeah, we all know how that works out, right? <laughs> Two overdriving solid state is not the same as tubes. It just doesn't work out yeah. the same. But I think overall, as a as an as an amp, this one's it's a winner, right? It's, Absolutely. I mean, I would place it up there easily with the Epif like the Epiphani stuff is great. Mm -hmm. the, it's it's up there with like the higher end Aguilar stuff. Okay. So I would I would place it up there. I mean, um, you, of course you have all your entry level amps, and I think that's great. But if you're like kind of that that player that's looking for your big boy amp, mm -hmm. uh, the Fuchs amp is definitely your big boy amp. It's <laughs> you know if you're gonna buy your big boy bass, get your big boy amp. You know, yeah. Make sure you're you know is it, that's also part of your sound too. Is it's not just it's not just the uh, the bass. It's not just the amp. It's not just the speaker. It's not just the cables. It's kind of a mix match of all those things. And, Basically, putting your puzzle together. Well, how does the puzzle look at the end? If you're not, if you're not finding those right pieces, this amp, I think, is the right piece. Now, is this the right cabinet for it? It works. It works well enough. I think that if you took this to say, you know, a 215 cab or a 115 cab or an 810 cab would be probably huge. That'd be monstrous, uh, and it will drive it. And and the cool, it's got that cool amp in the back, so it's always running cool. I and mean, even now, we've been playing through this for a while, and it's it's, mm -hmm. it's cool to the touch, yeah. which is really great. Um, and, and that's one of those things that you see about like a tube amp and that's, you know, as, a, as somebody who owns an SVT, that thing is like 85, 88 pounds. You know, sure. it's heavy and it's hot. <laughs> when I'm done with a gig, I go to lift that and that thing is a lot of weight. You know, you pick it up and it's it's heavy to go. I try not to ever bring the V4B out. If I, if I, only for like big, big events or big outdoor gigs. Or yeah, no matter what you do with that, it's, you're going to be breaking your back. I mean, that's where, that's where those carts come in handy. But this one, you definitely don't need a cart. So if nope. you are... If you're going light and you want to go loud and you want to have that sound uh, and and like like I said we're basically running one one cable we have a splitter down there we're running both bases into this amp uh, we don't have an active base on here but because of the pre-gain section here you can kind of dial that in so that you're not overdriving the amp with your with your uh, your preamp on your base because mm -hmm. that's never that never sounds good no no <laughs> no no it doesn't so guys, I think I think you know. Um, as far as where we're concerned, I think this amp is a winner. I, I like the way it sounds. It looks good. It feels good. The weight is good on it. Uh, would I keep? So this is this is the ten thousand dollar question, Sean. Would you keep this amp if it was part of your stable, or would it be a trader? Was it one that comes in, stays for a while, and goes back out, or would it be one that you would keep? Now, be honest. Is it, is it a keeper? Or is it, or is it a flounder? <laughs> uh, okay, so for me, it's about like the the floor pr footprint. Yep. You know that how much power it's packing, how reliable it is. Yep. And uh, all those things factored into this right here, like, I would keep this. I would one hundred percent keep this. I wouldn't trade this or nothing like that because I've had amps that I traded that sounded great, but honestly didn't fit that didn't hit all those checkpoints yep. or those check marks. So and like this this guy kind of does that, which is great. Exactly. That's what I was thinking too. It's like. It's it's also a perfect second amp, mm -hmm. you know. It's it's like if you do have, like like me, you know, having the SVT, it's a great amp. But there's times that you're like, do I really want to break my back? <laughs> you know, sometimes is is the gig worth enough money to, to drag the amp? Also, sometimes if you're playing a room that's not just not that big, mm -hmm. and you need enough sound but not a lot of sound, and you're dragging out a th the 300 watt SVT, it's almost too much work too much work for for the space. 
So something like this as as your your other amp, and that's I think that's one of the things that I don't think we explore. Like we have tons of basses, mm -hmm. and we have one amp. Why is that? Yeah, I mean, like personally myself, I, I have two amps. I have like my larger rig, which yeah. would be the Ampeg, and then I use like a, a smaller rig as a smaller footprint and whatnot. And I use that one for when I'm traveling on the road and whatnot. This is something that I would probably bring with me on the road, like in, a, in like a Pelican case or something. Or if they're making a bag for it, I, I would you know yeah. get get the bag for it that goes along with them because it's not going to take up a lot of space. And it does bring that power, and it does bring that like big bass boom that we want like in our guts. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I think I think it's it's very uh, it's very flexible, so we can make it work for almost any situation. But I think also it does have its own tone, and I think that's a nice thing too. So especially if you're looking for an amp that's going to give you another an, another tonal color, it, it's it's a great amp for that. Mm -hmm. So like I said before. In the article we did write, I wrote out and I gave you some photos of the front and the back of the amp. We went through an overview of how we would use it. The amp itself is excellent. I like it. Um, I think that in in reality, it's it, you know you, you need to play it. You need to hear it. You heard it here, but getting your hands on it is always the final. That's the final test, right? <laughs> Get it in your hands and play it. I don't think you'll be disappointed though. I think overall the amp itself is a really great amp. Any final words before we before we end this out? No, I mean I, I'll be looking for one on Reverb for sure. <laughs> it is on Reverb, <laughs> and you can also check it out on Fuchs Audio. If you go to FuchsAudio.com, you can see uh, a list of, of Andy's amps, and you can check out the specs on the amp. The specs are in the article with this as well. Check it out. Uh, we definitely would want you to hear it. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. I'm Steve the Bass Guy. You can check me out at Steve the Bass Guy at uh, on Instagram and Sean Cav on Instagram, right? Yep, yeah, I'm Sean Cav. Yep. yep. He's Sean Cav. <laughs> and I'm Steve the Bass Guy. And, then, and we're here with Bass Musician Magazine doing a little bit of amp chat around the Fuchs FBT 700. Thanks for hanging out with us, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace, love, and low notes. <laughs>